was too long, huh? Prestige television. Don't those words just get your heart racing? The slow, tense scenes, the shocking moments that get Twitter buzzing, a white guy doing something you know he shouldn't be doing, but damn if he isn't just in such a pickle. But it has become so reliable now. Whenever I sit down for a new high budget drama, I brace myself for the overly long, pretentious title sequence. They're gonna pan around objects in extreme close-up, they're gonna play with some very straightforward imagery, and it is going to be 90 seconds long for some reason. Take Mindhunter, for example. It's 95 seconds of tense piano over shots of a tape recorder and flashes of people who got serial killed by the very minds our protagonists are hunting. It's a fine intro if it were the opening credits of a movie, but for all 19 episodes? And then it gets canceled so we never find out if they even caught the mind? Feels like a waste of time. I do have to say, my thoughts on these intros don't necessarily reflect my thoughts on the shows themselves. Not only because I haven't finished every series I'm gonna rip on here, but because there are plenty of shows I love that have intros I don't want to watch. The Haunting of Hill House is one of my favorite shows of the last few years, but when it popped into my head for this, I genuinely couldn't remember if it had an opening title sequence. It does, it turns out. It's a one minute tone piece, just statues screaming and the house being a labyrinth. Didn't do much for me, clearly, but it has its fans. It's just so simple, though. And then Haunting of Bly Manor had even less going on. The characters are in paintings and their eyes go away. There's no reason to watch this more than once. Because it's so scary. Ah! Hunters has an all right intro, although it's too long. The main cast are represented as little chess pieces going up against the Nazi chess pieces. Jeff Hahn, art director at Elastic, the studio who worked on the title sequence, said they used chess for the intro as a thematic exploration of the show's tactical elements. Although it looks like every piece can only move straight forward, and then the main guy puts himself in checkmate at the end. The Night Of was a big inspiration for my new intro. It's 90 seconds of serious orchestral music and shots of key plot-related objects. Drugs, stairs, taxi, jail, stairs. What's the purpose of an intro like that? Obviously all these title sequences do have a point that I've been very rudely not giving them credit for. One of its primary functions should be to prepare you, a curtains rising and lights dimming type of moment, to be told a story. It gets you out of reality and pulls you into the eyes of the storyteller. That was me doing a funny voice, imitating Alan Williams, a creative director at Imaginary Forces who made the Mad Men intro, the Stranger Things intro, and a lot more. Any title sequence at a prestige TV level of production value does a decent job at preparing you to be told the story. But when it feels too generic, is it really pulling me into the world of the show or is it just telling me I'm about to watch some drama with a budget? Because the problem is, so many of these intros are completely interchangeable. Please allow me to introduce... CG objects spinning around. Altered Carbon's intro has a short and a long version depending on the episode, but both only feature pans around snakes and some of the show's weird cyber stuff. If Altered Carbon's first and only season was great at one thing, it was world building. It's an incredibly well-realized world, and it is amazing how little they managed to show of it here. There's no objectively right way to craft an intro for any show, but this world has limitless potential to pull from, and all we get is this pretentious imagery we patiently wait to be over. But it was nominated for an outstanding main title design Emmy. So what do I know? American Gods is also 90 seconds of panning around CG objects that got nominated for an outstanding main title design Emmy, but this time there's kind of a neon tinge to it and they used a different font for the title. And The Crown's intro also moves around some CG objects, but with some goop involved, which was goopy enough to earn them a nomination for that sweet, outstanding main title design Emmy. Fun fact, all three of those intros were by Elastic, that studio I mentioned earlier and will definitely be mentioning again. Star Trek Discovery's intro stands out for having no visual metaphor whatsoever, which isn't inherently bad, but I mean, just looking at a phaser, just looking at the Vulcan hand thing. I mean, what is this show? Some kind of joyless nostalgia grab? Can't say, haven't seen it. Lost in Space, while itself a pretty 
unsatisfying spin-off of Lost has an intro that serves it well. Those big Star Trekky horns and visuals do a good job of amping up the excitement and importance of the mission. An intro I really like is for Utopia, a show you've never heard of because it's on Amazon Prime and it's not the boys. It also features objects, which aren't the problem, but this one is plenty dense enough to watch every episode. Not so much to pick apart a visual metaphor, but for the little clues at the show's main conspiracy it has embedded in it the whole time. So you're picking up on something new in it every episode as you learn more about the plot. It also has an eerie tone and quick pace that really puts me on edge. It just matches the show perfectly. HBO's True Detective, those intros also suit and improve the show they're on, and they do it by matching each season's different characters, setting, and mood. Season one especially gives you plenty to look at, a song you don't get tired of, and overall just puts you in the dirty Louisiana bayou. I mean, I smell terrible just thinking about it. But HBO has been hit or miss for me in the intro department. Westworld has an intro that doesn't add much, besides revealing that the, uh, the cowboys are fake. And that sequence is a minute and 45 seconds. <laughs> I could have used that time to watch 17 and a half vines. The Leftovers season one intro was so incredibly self-aggrandizing that I really liked it. It got me genuinely pumped up for the addicting narrative with weight and stakes that apparently happened at some point. Goliath has a bit stranger symbolism to work with. Rocking music, Dave Goliath, I'm assuming that's his name, walking underwater and smoking, and then he blasts off at the end and floats over the water. Sometimes more out there imagery does make it interesting to look at on repeat, unless you're smart and you just, you get it right away, like me. He's a drifter, you know, he's floating through life. The ocean represents his IBS. But being so dense that you decipher new things from it each time, obviously that doesn't need to be the goal of a TV show title sequence. It's just one possible way to make them fun. And being dense isn't even the best thing an intro like Utopia's does. It's not why that stands out to me. Setting the tone properly is the bigger deal. So having a title sequence that's more sparse and ambient doesn't automatically make it bad. It's just that if it's boring, that doesn't set a very compelling tone for the show. Bloodline shows us the sky changing for 90 seconds. Three seasons, 33 episodes, the sky. The only thing that kept me watching was that wonderful moment when Norbert Leo Butts pops up. Oh, a king's name. God's perfect son. House of Cards was another early Netflix original with an unbelievably bad intro. Pure prestige with no interest in doing anything besides city and names. Just shots of Washington DC streets for 90 seconds for six canceled seasons. There is zero intent for you to watch that. There has to be. They're just saying, look, it's a real TV show. Like how you'd see if you were watching real TV. I think for a time when watching multiple episodes of a show, Netflix used to just start the next episode after the intro automatically, which is a fine way to lean into the binging they want us to be doing with their shows. I'm already immersed in the show, so I don't need to be absorbed again by those incredible shots of the streets where the characters live near. Succession has similar visuals, but is elevated by an excellent theme song. The Newsroom's intro is hilarious. Two full minutes about the proud history of the news. It's honestly a fun setup for what the show is, but of course, wildly too long to watch every time. Later on, they went with a shorter one, but that didn't improve it. They went with a city and names, which that's taken. Stop making that. Little Fires Everywhere shows us some of the items that were lost in the premiere's, spoilers, actually quite big fire. It's not a bad intro. The shots are cool to look at, and also when the violin slides in, we hear a violin solo start, which is kind of a funny touch and makes me wish they did that for every object. Ratchet, the most necessary show on TV, shows a young Ratchet follow Yarn through her formative experiences until she meets old Ratchet at the end. And I'm just sitting there thinking, where's Clank? <laughs> It really does feel like those intros are designed not to be watched sometimes. Like who is watching Mindhunter's intro every episode? It's a tape recorder. So what are you supposed to do when the opening titles are boring and too long? What then? 
Won't someone please invent a perfect exact solution that makes everything I've said so far not matter? All right, the skip intro button. It may have been annoying I didn't mention it earlier because it is the solution we use for, I'm gonna guess, almost every show we watch. The skip intro button is totally ingrained in our consumption tool set, inseparable from the TV watching experience. But remember before we had it, people still skipped the intro. It was just a pain in the ass. You would fast forward way past it and then have to go back and then you were too early and then you would go forward just a little bit again and sure it would end up taking about the same amount of time as just watching the intro, but you got to feel like you were in control of your life. That feels like a lifetime ago, but this was shocking to me. Netflix only invented the skip intro button in 2017. So feel young yet? Some people wish it was automatic so they don't have to grab the remote or walk up to their mouse to press it. Some people wish they could turn it off because it breaks their immersion in the show they're watching and they never do it anyway. And honestly, my only deciding factor for a good TV show title sequence is that when I watch it, I don't have the impulse to skip it. Because the real problem with these intros is just that they're so long. And the skip intro button has made it so no one, viewer nor creator, cares how long their intro is. Because hey, it's effortless to skip it. Maybe it even boosts engagement by making you press a button. Oh cool, when they're watching our show, 70% of viewers are awake. We've discussed how TV intros do, or at least can, serve the important purpose of bringing you into the show. And that makes their de-emphasis kind of a bummer. The idea of skipping an intro should be weird, but a lot of intros deserve it. They aren't meant to be watched, or at least it doesn't matter whether you watch them. To be fair, that's been true of all shows forever. You don't have to watch the intro, you may as well take the opportunity to go get a snack. Come back and try and plop down on the couch at the same moment Homer does. And the correct reaction to all my complaints about any of these intros is, just skip it. But I think that sucks. It's like fast traveling in video games, jumping from location to location across a big open world. It gets me where I'm going, but if it's the best option, does it not make everything I'm skipping by fast traveling a little pointless? I just want intros to add something to the show. The skip intro button is good and necessary, but it also helps kill the incentive to make the intro a worthwhile, essential part of the package, which it absolutely can be. A great intro elevates a show a lot. Game of Thrones had one of the most iconic title sequences on television. Flying around that 3D map with that song playing, Elastic was behind that one as well. It was actually one of their earlier gigs making title sequences. One of the smartest things about that intro is that it changes based on where the episode will take place, putting a geographical marker on the scenes you're about to watch, including this weird one in an episode of season eight. Change like that is great for an intro. Surprise me, make me invested in the title sequence, make me not want to look away. The Wire's excellent intros change from season to season. They all feature covers of the same song and each do a uniquely great job of setting the scene for where that season takes place. And then it ends in a relevant quote from the episode. And what's fun is then when the character unknowingly says the quote later in the episode, they get slimed. Patriot, one of my favorite shows ever, is a show you've never heard of because it's on Amazon Prime and it's not the boys. And its intro for season one has to be my favorite of the whole medium. It's one minute long, just handheld footage of two boys growing up in Texas, goofing off and getting into trouble under Train Song by Vashti Bunyan. It's not outright stated who the kids are, so maybe in the first episode you're wondering what you're really looking at, but it soon becomes obvious it's our main character and his brother. And the easy read is that the footage is probably being filmed by their dad, who is still such a force in their adult lives on the show. And it's cute at first, but every episode adds more depth and sadness to what you're seeing. I truly get something new out of it every single time. Plus, every episode has unique title art that serves as a reward for not skipping the intro and makes it clear, yes, in fact, you were supposed to watch that. And with the song, it gets me in the perfect mindset for the sad humor of the show by focusing on the humanity of who we're about to watch in a clever, deliberate way. I can't say enough good things about it. I have to say the stock gunshot sound effect at the end is too bad though. Netflix's Bodyguard does something I've never seen before. They mix the cast names and music of the intro in with the pre-episode recap, making it one three to four minute chunk. And I think I love it. If you're binging the show, you're already in the mindset of the show and you don't need a recap of what just happened. But if you're coming back after a while off, now the recap does more than recite the plot at warp speed. It brings you into the mood and plot right where it is. Again, none of these are the solution for every show, but I think it's a cool idea that feels intentional and thought out. I can't deny it though. If I already love the show it's attached to, I'm probably gonna appreciate the title sequence more. 
I get excited to get brought back into that world. And I also can't deny I'm a little biased towards intros that are super, super short. Let's go back a few years, to a time when Netflix delivered VHS tapes by Horse and Buggy, and Breaking Bad was the biggest thing on TV. It had a very short intro after a cold open, and it was exactly what it needed to be. Cool and Southwestern. It used the bare minimum of graphics and music to get that tone across, and then got right back into the show. Lost was even before that, with an intro I love even more. Always deployed after a cold open with some scary moment or mysterious event. Brain dead simple, sure, but those rich, memorable sounds and empty frame are just perfect setup for the mysterious setting of the show. And then at the end of the series finale, when it did the intro again, but it says found? I mean, so satisfying. More recently, Unorthodox's intro is also after the cold open and a bit longer at around 15 seconds, but that feels like the perfect length. It helps amp up the energy and doesn't overstay its welcome. Just. Perfect intro. So, uh, mazel tov to you, unorthodox, as you wouldn't say. The Boys, a show you've heard of because it's on Amazon Prime and it's The Boys, opts for the title card only. Less isn't always more in this case, but I do like this technique just because it at least feels intentional. It's a part of the presentation and you don't even have the option to skip it. But The Boys is just one example of the title card smash non-intro. That style is huge right now and maybe edging towards becoming the norm. I mean, Watchmen, Gamora, The Witcher, Absentia, Tin Star, Hannah, Aerodactyl! Barry's version of this is excellent. A smash cut to a title card with a big music sting that you're dying to hear more of. It's so fast, but still so meaty. Too Old to Die Young's title cards cranked up the length all the way to 10 seconds, with different styles and different music over different shots every episode. And yet they still had the stones to put a skip intro button on it. They did eventually remove it, thankfully, so I have no idea what those union negotiations could possibly be about. Guys, they already fixed it. Cold opens usually do the job themselves of setting the pace of the show and getting you invested, and keeping the following intro short stops it from breaking that pace. The cold open to long intro that you want to skip combo just takes you out of it and gets you fumbling for your remote. Some shows have been opting out of doing any of this by simply having a title card at the very beginning and just letting the show start. Tales from the Loop has a nice one, just letters of the title falling into place with good, moody music. Get Shorty, another show I love, is as basic as it could possibly be. Just the title in typewriter font before you see anything. Sometimes I wonder if it's an issue of budget, though. Just cheaper to sidestep the massive undertaking of a 90 second prestige intro. Oh, pff, it's not a budget issue, it's on epics. <laughs> they get big movies. <laughs> I love a short intro. Like I said, any intro I don't want to skip, it's pretty good. It's really just, it's not that hard to hire a talented studio to make something distinct and cool. It's quite effortless. Anyone with money can do it. So often it seems like the goal for a prestige drama's intro is to make something stark and compelling for people to watch once, while understanding and accepting that it's absolutely getting skipped every time after that. And it doesn't matter, because those people skip everything anyway. And you got an Emmy nomination, so it must have been good. It feels like so many showrunners just saw Game of Thrones' excellent, groundbreaking intro and said, let's get that studio to do something cool for us, too. And I don't intend to dump on Elastic at all. They have made so many intros, including plenty of great ones, like the True Detective sequence. It just can be a cop-out to hire out like this, especially when they're relying completely on the designer's sense of style to make it great. They're saying, let's send out some notes about our show and then have some talented artists who don't have a complete vision of it pitch us something they'll make that fits it well enough. That's strange to me. The space is dominated by just a few major studios. The vast majority of the sequences I've talked about were created by the same four or five teams. According to a 2016 Bloomberg piece, that's because producers typically don't want to sit through more than four pitches for an intro, so the same few shops generally get the calls. Anyway, I talk about this because I care. I love TV. Or at least I watch a lot of it. And I think the dramatic title sequence is a creative medium with a lot of potential, and it's kind of in a rut right now. But really, if I could only get one message from this video to Hollywood, it's this. I don't know how 90 seconds became the default, but please stop it. One minute is plenty to do anything you could possibly want to do. 90 seconds is zero seconds if everyone skips it every episode. What are your favorite intros? What are your least favorite? Where do you watch TV? How many inches is your screen? What's your dog's name? Just comment, <laughs> please. Oh no, this seems really bad. You gotta tune in next episode to see how this situation gets resolved. 
this is must-watch television. 